All right, I guess it's been about a week and a half since we've uh, filmed anything on the farm or other than the epic Christmas display that we did. So we've been, uh, we got done with harvest about a week and a half ago. Uh, last week was Thanksgiving week. We spent all that getting the combine cleaned up, the grain buggy cleaned up. Uh, just getting started in December, all of our end of year stuff, we still got tons of equipment to get clean, cleaned up and put away for the winter. Zach just got done bush hogging around all the fields, getting all the field edges cleaned up and just uh, doing a little bush hogging on our gin lots out here. Get them looking good all winter long. But anyway, all we've been doing this year is spending money. Money been going out all year long. It's expensive to put a crop in and hopefully later on this winter, I'll do some videos showing you exactly what it costs to put each of the different crops in. But Anyway, like I said, we've been spending money all year long. Bills are coming due at the end of the year. We gotta get some money coming in. It's time to sell some crops. We should be getting a check-in for our uh, cotton from Staple Cotton any day now. All of our cotton has been ginned. I'll do a video letting you know exactly how poor the cotton crop was here coming up. But, so anyway, with it being December 1st, uh, all of our corn is contracted for December delivery so we can start delivering our corn and get some money coming in from this high-priced corn. And not only do we get some money coming in from our corn, we get to use this new loadout bin we just had constructed you know we we constructed this uh, 2100 bushel loadout bin to make us a lot more efficient on hauling to where we don't have to spend near as much time loading our truck over there hopefully it's going to cut the loading time from 15 minutes down to heck i don't know minute minute and a half or so and the truck will be on the way and we built it mainly with corn in mind because corn is by far our highest volume crop and we've only got a month to deliver it in it's like i said it's all contracted for december delivery and well it's not like we can haul all of december either we got christmas eve christmas day which luckily christmas day falls on a weekend uh this year but i'm sure the grainers will be closed probably the following monday or be closed all of christmas eve or whatever we also got new year's eve so you know we don't have the normal number of uh hauling days that we normally would in any other month but anyway uh, december has got 23 business days in it but that's including new year's eve and christmas eve when a lot of places are going to be closed so say 21 days minus today because today's december 1st and we're not actually going to get any delivered today we've got 20 days to haul around 84,000 bushels now in the past uh pretty much all of our grain has gone to bungie about 50 miles away on the mississippi river north of dyersburg but this year the new uh, tyson facility is actually starting to use corn as feed for chickens they're getting uh, chicken production ramped up here in the hum Humboldt area. So the price that they're offering on corn has gone way up. It's only been a couple cents off of what I could get at Dyersburg. And the Tyson facility is only 10 miles up the road maybe versus 52 miles away for the Bungie facility. So uh, we're definitely gonna be more profitable hauling just a few miles down the road than we are to Bungie. Plus we'll be able to make a whole lot more loads in the day. So, Hauling 84,000 bushels of grain with one truck in 20 working days should not be a problem at all, especially with this new loadout bin. So anyway, Zach's just about done bush hogging. So I'm gonna go ahead and preload this tank with about 2,000, 2,100 bushels of corn. And as soon as he's done bush hogging, parks that tractor, we'll back the truck under here and see just how fast we can get a truck loaded. 
All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the gate to our number one bin. We've got corn in here. This is our smallest bin. We've got corn in here. But the problem is, is that unless we open up a bin, if I make any kind of slip ups and I, and I fill the holding bin all the way up, well, then there's no place for the corn to go and the loop fills completely up with corn and then it's choked up. And then we got a big old mess on our hands, which I don't want. So we're gonna open up this bin. So once that bin is full, if I don't get it shut off in time, any corn that's still in the elevator can spill over into this bin, which is already corn. So uh, gonna do that as a, as a safety measure. All right, we're gonna open up the top for our uh, holding tank. Looks like it's already open there. So. so we're ready to start putting some grain in here. All right, we got our elevator on and we've got corn. We got four total bins here, not counting the holy bin. Uh, wait for him to pass up. Anyway, we got four total bins here. Bin one is corn. Bin four through there is corn. Bin two is soybeans. And then bin three here is corn. Bin three is the driest corn that we got. It was the first corn that we harvested and put in here. Uh, bin one's also dry, but we're, like I said, we're using it as a spillover. Bin four's got just a little bit more drying than it, ne it needs to be. The top sensor is showing the moisture is just a little high. So it'll probably be the, well, we'll do it after we unload bin three here. We'll open up about halfway just let a little bit of grain go through there and slick and slick everything up make sure all the moisture is removed because we open up all the way and if there's any kind of moisture there in the loop pipe we could overload the motors and stop it up all right that should be enough to have her cleared out go ahead and open it all the way up Bill and Joyce, I know how much you love our 4440 tractor, so I'll show it one last time for the year. Now, in the video where I showed y'all uh, this holding bin just right after it got constructed, I showed you those with like black dots right there on the side. Those are grain level indicators, and when the corn gets up to the level of that indicator, it'll flip over and show yellow. So we're just going to stand here and watch it. And when that first one is uh, uh, flipped over, we'll know we got about 1,100 or so bushels in there. And then when the top one gets flipped over, we'll know we're getting pretty dang close to full and we need to be heading back there to shut the bin off. Just to give you a little view of the corn going through the loop pipe there. I'll probably do a video this winter or spring on how grain systems work. This one's different than what you would see on a lot of farms. The elevator system is a little bit, it's a different type of design than what has been used for decades. Instead of having one tall elevator that just goes straight up with downspouts that go to each bin, we've got a loop system. It's a continuous loop that goes over the top in the line it goes over goes over the top of the bins in a line and loops back down up under the bin so it uses just this loop to load and unload to to load the bin we dump in the dump pit the loop carries it up over the top and drops it in whichever bin we have open and then to unload the bin just like i showed you we open the gate on the bottom it brings the corn out through the bottom loop carries it up and then dumped it here in our holding tank. It's a lot simpler system than a traditional elevator because you've only got two motors and one big long loop chain and tubes. Whereas a typical elevator, you got the elevator, you got a bunch of downspouts, but then you got an auger coming out of each bin with its own separate motor to unload the bin. So it's a lot more, it's a lot more mechanics a lot more electrical, a lot more motors, a lot more stuff to go wrong. Now this fourth bin that we got over here, because it's not in the line, the loop can't dump or unload directly into it. 
So you see up there, we've got another, it's what's called a Versa loop coming from our number two bin, and it goes to the top of the number four bin, which is back behind the number one bin. And then coming out of that bin, we've got a traditional auger that brings the corn over back to the main loop system. I'll climb up here, get on this platform, give you a little bit better view of the, uh, of the green indicators there. First, just gonna check my amps, make sure we're not overloading the motors. Anytime the needle gets above 40 amps, we run the risk of overloading the elevator and the motor is kicking off. So right now we're about 34 amps, so we're well within tolerance. Now, if the corn was high moisture, or if we're running soybeans, both of those pull a lot more amperage and we need to really watch the uh, amperage on the elevator a lot more closely and adjust the flow to make sure we don't unload, make sure we don't overload the motors. However, for dry corn, that stuff is slick and slides real easy and it doesn't take near as much power to move it through the elevator. You hear that squalling sound like a woman being murdered? That's the chain loops. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what makes it, it do it, but it generally does it when the top pipe is empty. So I don't know if it's the paddles rubbing on the pipe as it goes through or not. It sounds awful, but I promise nobody's being murdered out here right now. All right, I'm not very fond of heights as I've stated very clearly on previous videos, but I will go to great lengths to get y'all up close and personal shots. So I'm over here watching the indicator. I sure do hope that they welded all of this superstructure up really good because it's just making me nervous standing up here. We ain't loaded this thing all the way up yet, so it hasn't been tested. And here I am standing on the freaking ladder. Well, are you ready to make 80, 81 trips down the road to Fruitland? I'm more looking forward to making 81 trips to Fruitland than 81 trips to Dyer. I found, I found the hours out there open from eight to four every day. How many loads do you reckon you can make in a day? Should make one about every 45 minutes if the lines ain't too long. 45 so minutes eight, round eight, trip. Do you think you can make nine loads in a day? I'm hoping. Nine loads a day get us done uh, a week and a half. Nine days. Be nice. Well, between, between eight and nine days. Well, we got 20 days to get it all hauled, but the sooner we can get it done, the better. Oh, well, while that's loading, let's uh, go ahead and back that uh, back that truck on up. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but the first indicator's tripped up there, so we're about half full. the second one up there just triggered so I reckon we'll cut it go close the gate there's about probably about 40 50 bushels there in the loop pipe and that won't quite be two full loads but be close enough all we do is load one truck right, right now all right we're about to test your skill of how fast you can back up yeah, we're about to test your skill of about of how fast you can back up you might need to put it in high range All right, let me see where I can place y'all and you got a good vantage point here. How about right there? That's a pretty dang good view right there, ain't it? All right, we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it slow the first load. We don't wanna tear anything up or overwhelm the truck. All right, I'm about to open it up. I can feel the whole superstructure shaking here. I 
All right, start shutting her down a little. Oh. Come on back. Oh. Come on back. Oh. Come on back. Oh. Come on back. Oh. Go ahead and pull her forward and check her down. Just add a little bit on top. Two minutes and 43 seconds. A new record for us. You know, the great thing about this, there is no more running to shut off a gate, no more tripping over pipes, no more sucking in dust while the wind's blowing. I'm really digging this new bin here. No more having to worry about ice building up on the stairs. That's right. Well, boys and girls, field work is done, bush hogging is done, the pressure washing has begun, which means it is gone from harvest season to hauling season. We have got the first load in the truck and I'm getting ready to roll out to Tyson this year. Thank the Lord. We got it all booked with uh, Humboldt this year instead of Dyersburg. So that takes a lot of miles off the truck. A lot of long days off of me and a lot of three hours sitting in line off the table completely. Should be able to get eight or nine loads in a day, about 45 minutes round trip. So we should be able to knock out this 83,000 bushels of corn in like 10, 11 days, maybe. I'm gonna get on the road, get down there and see what kind of lines we're looking at this morning. kind of a weird morning this morning foggy wet humid not our typical uh, December weather 
that's for sure milder than normal hadn't checked the weather in a week and a half really don't plan on checking it until about mid-march because you know what we're done in the field and we ain't got to be back in the field but it wouldn't surprise me if maybe a storm system might be coming in sometime soon i don't know we'll see anyway uh today is the day we're going to test out the capabilities of our grain system see how many possible loads we can get hauled in one day zach thinks he can get uh, nine loads hauled a day i think that's probably a little optimistic uh, he could drive it we could load it and he could drive it it's just uh there's always going to be some kind of hiccups you're going to find at the granary anyway zach left out about 30 minutes ago i expect him back here before much longer and we got a full bin loaded ready to ready to dump on him and we'll just see we'll see how many trucks we can turn today back already Well, that's a whole lot different than hauling to the river. Normally, I wouldn't expect them back for another hour if we're going to the river. We do have a problem with this loadout being it's a tight squeeze with our truck and trailer. We'll have to widen this uh, turnout here probably this summer. Well, the lines look like up there. They're pretty smooth. The lines aren't bad, but they're unloaded based off the moisture. They're unloading all three kids. They got one guy running all the kids. They can't get out and load every truck. It's always something. All right. See if we can do a little bit better job loading this time around. <laughs> Three minutes. How that make today? Eight. Eight. If I pushed it, I could probably get nine. Yeah, you probably got in there like 405 and gotten a bunch of frowny faces from them though. What was the, what was the hold up around noon? You stopped for lunch or was that a line or anything? Uh, they took my corn because it was so low of moisture and sent it straight to the feed mill instead of putting it up in the bin. Up and that shut me down for 20 minutes. So. I mean, for that, we definitely got we got nine loads easy. We got eight. Yeah. Probably. 
I had a pretty good first day with that thing. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah. Now we got it. Now we got our system down. We ought to be able to really really push on through it. Eight or nine a day, I'll be super easy. I know I ain't been able to do much of anything else just sitting here loading all day long. Yeah. As soon as I get started at washing and get halfway wet, you're already back again. Yeah. It's about 45 minute round trip, something like that. I think sometimes you're making it a little quicker than that. I say, well, that's close to 10,000 bushels today. That's a pretty dang good day. Yeah. We ought to be done in eight days. Easy. Well, if they're going to slow us down by taking less than 15 percent moisture straight to the feed mill and only able to unload third of the speed tell them i'm gonna start spraying a water hose in the truck before before you head out dad or ask for a premium since they're taking it straight to the feed mill not having to run a dryer yeah for real yeah that's no if they're doing that then i i don't get a choice though oh yeah you I, do when you say i'm gonna call my boss real quick tell him what's going on oh they don't care oh no they don't care Whatever. at least it's it, at least we're getting eight loads a day and not like two. At least we're not waiting on a barge to show up at the river, though. Or 70 trucks. Or the power going out. Oh, there's a line up there all the time right now, too. So God, I'm dreading it. January's going to be real fun. Can I slow down just to enjoy this month of yeah. not dealing with barges? Yeah. Not going. Zach, are you ever going to be back? <laughs> like, ever? How long's the line this morning? 70 million miles long. Yeah. Let's see if we can get nine done tomorrow. Well, he just got done hauling for the day. He just, uh, just got done filling up the fuel. I sure am liking this uh, shorter distance hauling to Tyson. I know he's hauled at least 16 loads the last two days, if not 17 loads on one tank of fuel. Whereas normally when we're hauling to the river, we can only get six loads in on the tank of fuel. So with the way fuel prices are right now, it's a, uh, this new facility here in Humboldt, or well, it's not, not a new facility, but since uh, they raised the basis because they're starting to feed chicken, really paying off for us big time. Plus, we're getting this job done a whole lot quicker. Now we're just going to go ahead and get him preloaded for Monday morning here. I can't tell you how much I'm digging this loadout bin. We got it, we got it down to two and a half minutes to load a truck. Another 30 seconds tarp it. In three minutes, we got a truck back on the road. This thing's really paying off for us. Uh, how many loads we do today? I ain't had enough time to stop and then put them in the spreadsheet. Nine. Got nine loads. If you ain't got, would you get hung up on that next to last load? That was about, you, about, about an hour, wasn't it? Yeah, they had a, Something went down at the elevator that went down for about 15 minutes. I average, I clocked one of my loads running there and back. It took me 39 minutes. 39 minutes and then three and a half to load and tarp. I just timed it uh, two and a half minutes to actually fill the truck and then to say a minute to tarp, so. 45 minute round trip. We moving corn with one truck faster than anybody in America, I imagine. So if you hadn't had that one, hadn't had that one hiccup, it's a chance we might have done ten one day. I could have done eleven today if they wouldn't have had that line this morning where they had the three different things coming in, had the pits tied up. I could have had eleven today. I'm gonna have eleven Monday. I'm telling you, I'm gonna. Well, I'm uh, getting eleven. Another, another day and a half, we're gonna be down bin sweeping. I ain't gonna be able to keep up with you. It beats running the tires, Barry. I can tell you that much. Yeah, well, unfortunately, next month, uh, you're still going to get your taste of that. I'm going to enjoy my time while I can. I do know I can't get nothing else done in between me coming back and forth. By the time I go up there and cut the pressure, or get this loaded, go cut the pressure washer on and get my hands wet, you're already coming back. Well, the good thing is, I've already got 17 loads on. If I can average nine a day, Next week, that's another 45 loads. We'll be done by Wednesday of the next week. And then we'll be freed up to service everything sooner than we ever have. And we hauled all, we'll be, we'll be done hauling corn earlier than we were last year. And we hauled it all ourselves. I sure wish Tyson would bump, bump the price up on beans. I'd like to haul all my beans there too. Well guys, there you have it. Uh, first two days with this loadout being hauling corn has been a tremendous success. 
I don't know why I didn't build this thing sooner. Heck, if I built it sooner, it wouldn't cost near as much because the way steel price has gone up, I don't know, instead of being 36,000, it might have only been 28, 29, 30,000. Better late than never. That's gonna close, close us out this week. I got a few more minutes of daylight to wash some equipment and we're gonna call it a week. We'll bring you back on some more corn hauling probably whenever we get down to the bin sweeps and the bins because it's gonna get pretty hectic because Zach will be hauling and I'll be pretty much in the bin by myself sweeping, trying to keep up with him, which I don't know if I'll be able to do or not. So anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Check back in a few days. We'll be back with another video.